continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington, Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington, James Douglas as Stephen Cord. Late yesterday, the house on the hill was the scene of a bitter argument between Stephen and Betty Cord. This morning, the sounds have died down. The battleground is quiet. Martin Peyton feels his plan to bring Adrian Van Leiden here to break up the Cord marriage will work if his grandson Stephen can spend enough time alone with Adrian. The chemistry of these two personalities must explode. Hey, good morning. <sighs> Mrs. Van Leiden leave an order for breakfast, Mary? Oh, I thought you knew, sir. She's already eaten. She wanted to get an early start for the riding stables. Weber's waiting for her with the car. Oh, then I'll have to content myself with Mr. and Mrs. Cord's company, won't I? Well, I'm afraid they won't be joining you, Mr. Payton. Hmm? Well, Mr. Cord stopped by the kitchen to get a thermos of coffee. He said he was going for a walk on the beach. Seems to be in a remarkably sudden interest in outside exercise. Mrs. Cord going with him, I suppose? Oh, no, sir. I took her up for breakfast. <laughs> She's in bed with a headache. What a pity. Will you have your breakfast now, sir? Shortly, Mary. Who is it? May I come in? Oh. Just a moment, please. Shortage of foxes locally, but I can provide other quarry. Oh? Take the bridal path by the sea. Why? My grandson's gone for a walk on the beach. Don't you think that's a trifle obvious? This is the moment. Oh, Martin. If I show up down there, he's sure to see it's a setup. He's not a fool. I'd like you to do as I tell you. The timing's right. I see. Why are you so sure? And why do you require an explanation? It's just that I want things to go well, Martin. Yes, so do I. That's why I say, please get down to the beach. Where's Betty? Mrs. Cord's gone to bed with, quote, a headache. Oh. They've had a fight. You're enjoying the thought of the chase, aren't you? Promise of excitement, a hint of conquest. The bridal path by the sea. Yes, the trail runs along the bluff just over the beach. You have no difficulty finding him. And after I find him? Oh, who am I to advise an expert? Good hunting. trip yourself. You sure you got your pill? Yeah, they're in my purse. You better check. <sighs> got them? Yep. Now, don't forget to take them. No, I won't. And remember, the next one's at 11 o'clock. I know. Oh, say, wait a minute. Now what? I wonder if I shouldn't go back and get you a heavier sweater. Mom, I don't even need this one. Now, there's always a little wind on the beach at noontime. I know Rodney's gonna pick you up before then, but suppose he's late. Mom. 
don't mind me. It's important not to chill yourself. Yeah, or get overheated, or get my feet wet walking in the sand, or get tired, or get too much sun. Oh, you don't, I don't what? You don't have any way to keep the sun off your head. No. All right, all right, I'm just trying to think of everything. Yeah, well, what if I'm caught by a tidal wave, or get a giant clam? You better have Rodney bring the clam rake just in case. Oh, you. <laughs> You're such a kid still. I know. You figure you ought to be buying me doll clothes instead of maternity outfits. What is it my mother used to say? Um, the last doll is the first baby. <laughs> Son of a gun, Elliot, you look downright distinguished. Like um, a senator. Or at least a congressman, or some kind of fat cat. But I would have known you anywhere. Eddie Jacks. Yep, a little heavier around here, a few more gray hairs up here, and a lot of wrinkles. But still, it's Eddie Jacks, in person. Oh, come on, Elliot, I haven't changed that much, have I? Maybe I haven't held up as good as you. You're still skinny as a beanpole. But uh, I try to keep myself in shape. You know, I do a little weightlifting and work out in the gym every chance I get. Do I look that bad? Oh, no, uh, yeah, I recognize it. It's just that I'm, I'm surprised, uh, I say, amazed that you should turn up like this. Yeah, I've been gone a long time. Why would you come back now? And it's all over with. What's over? You mean you don't know? Let me show you. Well, I've been rather anxious to talk to you in the last couple of days. I've been asking questions about you all over town. And what's this got to do with me? See, I had this funny idea that some of Chandler's old tavern buddies might have helped him break out of this little jail we have over here. Perhaps I shouldn't call him Chandler. I suppose I should call him Jack Forrest. No matter what you call him, that guy was a loser all the way. Even 20 years ago when I knew him, he was a sorry excuse for a man. He was your friend. Now listen. You know how it is down at the tavern. Working back at a bar like that, hmm? surrendering to all kinds of people, even twisted types like Forrest. I mean, I don't think I'd go so far as to say that he was a friend of mine. Well, uh, doesn't make any difference now, anyway. Except for one thing, Elliot. I couldn't have helped you find him. I haven't seen him since I left. So you've uh, you come back, eh, Ed? Why? I thought you'd never ask. To be perfectly honest with you, I'm looking for a job. A job? Hmm? That's right, Elliot. I'm gonna give you some business. I wanna play some ad in your, what do you call it, your situations wanted column? Well, you act like maybe you don't believe me. And I don't blame you. A reputation has a habit of sticking to a guy no matter how hard he tries to shake it off. Eddie, are you coming back here to stay? Yeah, I'd like to give it a whirl if I can make a little loot. <laughs> there I go. I got a lot to learn if I'm gonna play it straight. What I mean is, I'll stay if I can find a job. You got any objections to running my ad? No. What kind of a job are you interested in, Eddie? Now, that's a good question. I was thinking along the lines of an executive job. Have you heard of any openings lately? Uh, no, uh, not today yet. What kind of qualifications do you have, aside from being a bartender? Well, that's the pity of it. But don't misunderstand me. I'm qualified for a lot of things besides just pouring booze. But let's face it, there aren't many openings for a fellow with my, um, 
qualifications. This is just about what I expected. Look, combination welder and burner. Heavy construction worker. Here's one, no experience necessary. Turkey processing plant. Turkeys. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, you haven't changed a bit. Come on, tell me the truth. Are you really serious about wanting a job? You better believe it. Dead serious. All I hear are jokes. Well, that's the way I am. Always kidding on the level. A head shrinker told me that I'd do that. The prison doctor. That's right. I was in prison. If I'm gonna play it square, there's no sense hiding the fact. It's gonna make it tougher, you know. I know. That's why I was putting on an act for you. Keep him laughing. Then maybe nobody will notice how beat up a guy is inside. How lonely. Let's see if there's something we can do about this ad. You must have done something Eddie, before they put you in prison. Yeah, I did a lot of things. All the wrong things. A little wheeling and dealing and a lot of gambling. I played the ponies and hit it pretty. Hit it pretty good in Las Vegas a couple of times, too. But easy come, easy go. One thing led to another and the deals became riskier and dirtier. And finally, I heard that key turn on the lock. Five years. I didn't think I'd make it. I bet you never thought you'd see the sun again, did you? That's right. But I don't have to tell you about those gray walls, do I? How long was it? Eighteen years. I don't see how you ever made it. Well, to tell you the truth, Eddie, I don't think I did. Still have a lot of stuff churning around inside of me. But I'll tell you how I did it. I just forgot about the day. And the nights, you know. I deliberately forgot about them. I began to think in terms of seasons, you know, winter, spring, summer, and fall. In terms of fours, you know, units of fours. A heck of a lot better than thinking of 365 units. A lot better. Yeah, I know it was rough on you. But you weren't Eddie Jacks. Now, here was a guy who was used to being where the action is. The horses, the casinos, the night spots. Wherever there was a fast buck to be made, that's where you'd find him. Now, what does a guy like that do when he gets locked up? You gotta learn what to do with time. So, you start to think. And that's the worst part of it. Mostly, I think about the bets I missed. I guess you know that I've got a, a grown daughter. Oh, sure, sure. Read it. Wonderful girl, eh? I walked out on them. Ada and my little girl. I just took a powder. I had a lot of time to think about that. A lot of time, believe me. Well, that's a good reason for coming back. I want to get to know my daughter if it's not too late. I want to see if a, a phony, a con artist like myself, can make a go of a of just being a father. You know, I came back to a grown daughter, too. You see? Let's, well, let's get back to this. Ah, you see, ready? Eddie. Jack. 